We've been interpreting coefficients to um, describe relationships in the sample, um, but so far we haven't really asked about the possibility that these relationships could just be due to chance, right? Do they really exist in the population? Um, so in this video, we're going to do inference for multiple regression. We're actually going to do two different types of tests. Um, we're going to do an F test and we're going to do a T test. Okay, so um, we'll start with the F test for the collective effect of all the explanatory variables before. Um, so you've seen this before that an F test can test more than one parameter at a time. So we're going to be using the F test for testing the overall model. So basically, we want to consider the model that includes both of these predictors. So our null hypothesis in this case would be that not just one of our slopes is equal to zero, but the slopes for all of our predictors are equal to zero, right? So if your slopes are equal to zero across the board, um, then that's going to be a useless model, right? That none of the things that you've put in are actually helping you predict the response. So that's your null hypothesis. And then your alternative, maybe not surprising um, based on what you've seen before, is that at least one of these slopes, at least one of the betas, is not equal to zero. So basically that means you have um, at least one useful predictor. So this isn't telling us right away which one, just that we have at least one useful predictor in this model. Okay, so to do that, to do the F test, um, we're going to be using this information down here. So the F statistic is 62.15. Um, we would need to know the degrees of freedom to actually calculate this, um, but we're just going to let um, R do it for us. And then our p-value, we can see we've got really small scientific notation. I'm just going to put the p-value is approximately zero. Okay, so we have, because our p-value is so small, that means that we have very strong evidence that at least one of our predictors is useful. Very strong evidence that at least one predictor, and in this case, our two predictors are um, size and location. At least one predictor is useful. And this is sort of a baseline, right? If you don't have um, at least one useful predictor in this test, you really just have to stop, right? So if you, if you don't find anything here, um, you don't want to go forward with it. Um, but we do have at least one useful, so we want to follow up and figure out, okay, which one is useful? So for testing the overall model, you use the F test. Um, for follow-ups to decide which of the predictors are actually useful, you're going to use a T test. Okay, so in these follow-ups, you're going to be testing only one slope at a time. So beta, I'll put beta i to show it could be either one equals zero. And usually we're testing a two-sided alternative here um, that whichever slope you're testing is not equal to zero. Okay, so now we're going to be using these numbers up here. These are the tests for our individual predictors. Okay, so the F test, this one is for the overall model. And the T test, this is for your individual predictors. Terrible handwriting. Okay, so let's look at size first. Um, so the size one, we end up with a very small p-value. Our p-value here is 0 0.0004, rounding a little bit. Um, so we have strong evidence to conclude that size is associated with price. Strong evidence to conclude that size is associated with price. So, so far this looks like um, the kind of conclusion we would have drawn for simple regression, right? That's what we do if we get a significant result in simple regression. But this isn't simple regression, this is multiple regression. So we have to remember to say, after adjusting for location. So adjusting for another variable, we already saw how that can change the coefficient. Um, and of course, if it changes the coefficient, it can change the p-value too, right? They have different meanings, so it could be significant in simple regression and not significant in multiple regression or vice versa.
Okay, so now let's do it for location just to be thorough. Um, location is an even smaller p-value. I'm going to be lazy and not do the scientific notation. Essentially zero. So again, we have strong evidence to conclude. This time we're talking about location. Strong evidence to conclude that location is associated with price. And because it's multiple regression, we have to remember to say after adjusting for size. So I do want to point out that because we're adjusting for location, adjusting for size, um, this is all based on adjusted sums of squares. So it does it by default when you're talking about regression, but if you actually want to calculate an ANOVA table, you have to tell R to do the adjusted sums of squares, um, and that's where that capital A ANOVA function comes in. It does the adjusted sums of squares. Um, so I wanted to point this out um, to remind you when this is important. Right? When do you have to care about adjusted sums of squares? This is important anytime there's an association between your explanatory variables. So we saw um, some cases like this um, when we were talking about categorical predictors. It's going to happen a lot more now um, because we don't have these nice designed experiments anymore. Um, with regression, we're usually talking about observational studies um, where there's going to be some association between your predictors. And we already talked about how size and location are associated with each other. Okay, so let's think about what that looks like. Basically, you have some overlap in the variables, right? If you sort of treat this little Venn diagram as like size and location, you have some overlap, right? Some variability that's explained by both of them. So if you look at the adjusted sum of squares for size, adjusted sum of squares for size is only going to be talking about this part of the square, right? It's the part that's accounted for by size alone. Um, or you could think about if location were already in the model, how much additional variability would be explained by size, right? It's the part that's explained by size and not by location. You can obviously do something similar for location. So if you were to calculate, um, I guess I'll label these again. If you were to calculate the adjusted sums of squares for location, you'd be talking about the variability that's explained just by location, right? That if size were in the model, how much additional benefit would there be by adding location, right? Or if we want to use the language of regression, how much is explained by location after adjusting for size, right? Whereas if you were to calculate SS model, we've talked about SS model um, when we were doing simple regression. SS model, also called SS regression, that would include all of this. So it would include um, size and location and the part that could be explained by either of them. So SS model would include all of this. So specifically, it includes this little overlap square um, that we might call covariation. Okay, so if you were to add these up, um, they wouldn't sum up to the SS model because SS model also includes the covariation there in the middle. So just to be clear, when you use the LM function, um, it's going to do your hypothesis test correctly all on its own. It'll do your t-test correctly. Um, but if you want to calculate an ANOVA table, you have to make sure to do the one in the car package to be getting those adjusted sums of squares.